I do think much like some other cults, many other cults, it had some pluses, which is why smart, vibrant people like you got drawn in. Um, so talk about how you first heard about it and what was attractive about it to you. Sure. Um, it was 2005. I was an aspiring actress and I was looking for more meaning and purpose community in my life. I met a really talented filmmaker who I admired. I'd just seen his film, What the Bleep Do We Know? And the long and short of it is he said, well, if you like my film, then you'll probably like this course I just took. And as somebody who was into self-improvement and workshops, my parents are both in the therapy field. It seemed like a no-brainer. I did not do any research, unfortunately. Uh, I've learned from that mistake now, but I jumped in. I really wanted to develop myself and work through limiting beliefs. And that was the, that was the beginning. And it was wonderful at first. Yeah. How about you, Nippy? Um, my story is less glamorous. I had an old high school girlfriend who I went to boarding school with, and she's from the area. And she had taken the training and I had run into her in New York and she kind of hounded me for about a year and a half. So I kind of went kicking and screaming uh, to the training um, in part because of what she was saying and in part because she knew me when we dated and she knew I was into the leadership stuff and, and all that stuff. And, and it was aligned with me and, you know, my principles. And finally, after kind of being hounded about it, I said, fine, I'll, I'll do your cult. <laughs> so I called it a cult. <laughs> From the get, jokingly, you did, um, but I didn't did, did you have yeah, any hint, yeah. or just, that was just purely a joke? It was purely a joke. It, well, it sounded like a cult, and I didn't really have a, a strong understanding of what a cult is. It just sounded weird, and it sounded like you're following this guy. And I was like, "Yeah, I'll do your cult." And I kind of jokingly went up and did it, and it didn't seem. I mean, it was weird. I mean, it was it was Lots weird the weird whole times. time. Um, but I kind of took it, you know, in stride, and was like, "Well, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen?" Well, <laughs> cut to. <two>. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Right, right. Um, it's so it is true. This is kind of the study in in how how people can be manipulated. You know how mm -hmm. very bright, intelligent, accomplished people can be manipulated beyond what they ever thought possible. Manipulated into doing things like self harm against their better instincts and so on. It's like they they separate you from yourself. They, don't, they not only separate you from your family and your friends, they separate you from yourself, which is really one of the, probably the worst things that they can do. But all right, again, I'm getting ahead of myself because before we get to that chapter, there's the, there's the wonderful chapter. You know, I, I talked to Catherine Oxenberg about this, um, mm -hmm. princess and famed Hollywood actress. And she was saying the reason she got into it with her daughter, India, was they were just looking for female empowerment and to do better in business. They are both business, aspiring business mm -hmm. women. And they offered a lot of classes along these lines. So it's kind of, where do you go, right? Where do you go for female improvement or better business acumen if you're not going to take a full MBA program, Sarah, right? I mean, was there any of that sold to you? Oh, absolutely. In fact, they even sold it as a more practical and useful MBA. That's what I thought I was getting. And I remember when Catherine and India came and did the program, I was so happy because I loved them both and wonderful, bright, beautiful energy. And that was such a big part of it as well. It wasn't just learn how to do business, learn how what success is from the inside out, how to map out your goals and work through things that you're, you know, your limiting blocks, your beliefs about yourself and the world, but also as a community of like-minded people and people who were going to achieve big things and wanted to do it with people that were in a similar uh, mindset and and do it together. So I, I have very fond memories of that time period. Right. It always starts well. That's why people stay. Right. So exactly. explain what happened with the money because I think this story is very telling, and I I am also attracted by this woman's message. Like I can already see why you were like, oh, okay, because well, you tried to mm -hmm. complain or object a little to the expense of it when you were first being recruited. And they had an answer for everything. Oh, yes. I was recruited by the best. I actually put a deposit down because I wanted to take advantage of the 48-hour discount, which is a red flag I warned people about with sales, pressure tactics. I didn't know that at the time. And then I tried to get my, my money back because I was, you know, an actress living in a basement suite. I didn't have $2,000 to pay for a five-day training. And they said, well, you're in your 20s and you don't have $2,000? What's up with that? And basically mm -hmm. was questioning why I didn't 
have money, why I had money issues and wanted to know if I was ready to change that. And do I want to be the master of my own ship? Of course I did. And then you said something so, like, well, what if I'm in there and my agent calls with a role for me yes. while I'm in this training <laughs> and they had an instant answer for that too? Yeah. You're going to be waiting by your phone the whole, your whole life or you want to create your own create your own life, be the master of your own destiny, the captain of your ship or something it's like that. It's your first experience with gaslighting. That's my, yeah, so, my first yeah. experience with gaslighting, did not know what that was. And high, high sales pressure tactics. But Where I- Where your instincts was, are telling you, you one know, thing and they're, yes. they're trying to tell you you're basically a fool not to listen to your instincts. Those are the things yeah. that are holding you back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what you said earlier about separating you from yourself, that was the beginning. That was the beginning right there when my internal gut was saying, eh, something's not right here. But I also have the belief, and this was fortified further on in the curriculum, that when you're uncomfortable, it's something to look at. It's a, you know, um, you're hitting up against a limitation, no pain, no gain, which is true, but that doesn't give any room for gut instinct. And when you're separated from yeah. yourself and separated from your moral compass, that's when things can go awry. And that was a very slow process. That was di from day one. Uh, dripped out until, you know, 12 years later. This is why it's so important to keep away from these people to begin with, you know, to like, th yes. the secret is almost just don't get near them because they're so effective mm -hmm. and we're all vulnerable to messages like this. It's same, honestly, <laughs> weirdly, when it comes to news, like I, I'm very yep. careful about my news sources because before you know it, I mean, you can be, a little crazy if you take in too many news sources from the wrong people, it can really drive you a little nuts. So the whole answer to it is the, the screening up front before you will let mm -hmm. people access your brain and your heart. Great advice. Yeah, I would, I would add, you know, all these things are case by case and people are susceptible in different ways. And the predators like Keith Raniere, who are very good at it, are very good at spotting that and they're proactive in doing it. What they have going for them a lot of the times is they know what it's like to be you with your vulnerabilities and they know how to spot them and exploit them. Um, people who are more susceptible, they can probably spot, they spend more time with. And with people like Keith, you know, for me, I wasn't targeted in the same way he was targeting women. So mm -hmm. I was more peripheral to some of his abuse, but the people that were susceptible to what he was looking for were the people that he spent more time with. And he was, you know, if you could turn pro in abusing people, he was a professional at doing it. And that's ultimately mm. what came out, you know, when, when everything came out about what he was doing and how he was doing. Well, people talk so much about how he was this gifted, brilliant man. And it's true that in this one lane, he right. was quite gifted. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Not the lane. Yeah. Look at him now. I mean, this is like, this right. looks Ugh. like somebody no, who's trying to be a cult leader. He's got the Jesus hair, <laughs> the beard, yeah. you know, it's like, in retrospect, you're that like, picture, oh yeah, of course. That, yeah. That, that picture doesn't do him any justice. Yeah. No, he did get a makeover by the way. And I want to say 2010 or 11, where he was a little more clean cut and would wear like poloed shirts and nice jeans. And oh. yeah, because pe the people around him were like, you got to clean up a bit because you're not, but he would spend that, you know, he would spend that in the same way that say, you know, Einstein was quirky and he didn't care about that stuff. You know, that's Keith. He's just Keith. He's being him. Uh, he doesn't put value on material like things he's and he's, spiritual. he's himself and all that stuff. But and it's then, a total affectation. You know, that, that, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's so built you guys, are right. you, you've, you've talked on your podcast about the steps to realize you're in a cult or getting recruited by a cult. And people do need to be aware. There are tons of cults. It is not just this one. They're all over the United States. And you get, usually you get roped in the way you two did unknowingly. So one of the first red flags is what we just talked about, which is a lot of money. You, they want you to pay. And it, it tends to be escal escalatory, like a pyramid scheme, like more and more and more for the mm -hmm. next level. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because ideally what they want you to feel at the end of the five day is it was super valuable, but also there's something in you that needs to be fixed. And of course, they're providing the answers to fix you. And that's the only way, or that's another red flag. This is the path forward. This is the, this is the way to evolve whatever it was that you've just realized about yourself is broken. And that's, by the way, like very commonplace. Nexium is, I don't know if you are afraid of Scientology or not. We're not anymore, no, but not Scientology- afraid. Uh, landmark, like all of these programs are all based on the same premise, 
you know, if you want to transform your life, if you, want you to have clear. to pay money, you have to pay to play. And this is the path. And yeah. to justify yeah. the buy-in too. You know, you're there working for five days. You want to make sure that you feel that your investment was worth it. And so they'll say stuff like, well, was having that awareness about yourself worth the price of admission? And you're kind of going, well, maybe I could have gotten that from a book, but I did spend two grand to be here. So you have confirmation right. bias. Yeah. So <laughs> right yeah. there. Being in debt is like sinking in quicksand. You're trapped. You feel helpless. And the harder you struggle, the deeper in debt you can get. If you're trapped in debt, let me throw you a lifeline. Done with debt. Done with debt has created a new strategy with one goal in mind, to get you out of debt quickly and permanently. Done with debt stands between you and your bill collectors, and then they negotiate a plan to end your debt permanently, without bankruptcy and without loans. They can get you out of debt quickly and put more cash in your pocket monthly. But you need to contact Done With Debt soon because some debt solutions expire. It's easy to get started. You go to donewithdebt.com and get a free consultation. What do you have to lose? Talk with one of their experts about a strategy that will end your debt faster and easier than you thought possible. Visit donewithdebt.com. That's donewithdebt.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.